I've spoken before about fears and how you can take gradual actions to help you overcome them. Sometimes, though, I know it's hard to get through to the actions because you just get stopped. That's when the question, what's the worst that can happen, is really useful. It's a question I often use in coaching as we drill down to what the perceived fear is, why it is frightening and how we can get past it. The basic process goes along the lines of what's the thing you're frightened of? For example, public speaking. What's the worst that could happen? Well, I could look foolish. Why would that be a problem? People may not think I'm professional. So what do you need to do so that you don't look unprofessional? Well, I could prepare my talk, know my audience, check my facts, practice. And what else could happen? And you can go back and repeat this as many times for as many fears as you might have. The process goes on until all the fears are addressed and you can take it to the extremes of what could happen. When running through this process for myself, I often get to the stage where I ask myself, if this goes wrong, will I die? And sometimes there's no actual action you need to take at the end of it, just a realisation that the worst that could happen isn't necessarily as bad as you first thought. For example, if you make a fool of yourself, in your eyes, in front of a group of people you will never meet again, will it matter in six months' time? This process works with huge rational fears. For example, if you want to give up a job and follow your dream to write or to paint, it is rational to be worried about whether you will be able to make enough money to support your family, so it is sensible to do a risk analysis. It also works with those fears which seem huge at first, but which, after running through the process, become tiny or at least surmountable. And often, the worst that can happen is that you miss the chance to do something brilliant.